One of the most sought after BMWs ever. The car they didn't even want to produce. A car so monstrous, it practically started the badge trend. You know what it is. This is the M3. M3 took over motorsports and it hasn't looked back since. In 1986, BMW had a need, a need for speed. In Europe, if you want to create the fastest production car, then you compete in the Touring Competition Series. Because of the strict regulations for this series, BMW had to create at least 5,000 production cars of the M3. This made BMW create one of their most iconic cars ever, known as the E30 M3. The first generation took the basic body style of the E30 and revised almost every part of it. The M3 was built for racing and boy was it good at that. The E30 M3 had an all new inline four cylinder that produced 200 horsepower and 177 foot pounds of torque. It also came with a five speed manual transmission as all performance vehicles should. I'm, I hate that I just did that. This made it possible for the E30 M3 to reach zero to 60 in 6.7 seconds. In motorsports, this M3 won over 1,500 times in its class. <laughs> By the way, that is the most wins ever for a vehicle in motorsport history. BMW was reluctant to make 5,000 copies of the M3 because they thought they would never sell. Were they wrong? So very, very wrong. <laughs> Everyone fell in love with this race car edition coupe. BMW ended up selling over 17,000. BMW ended up selling over 17,000 E90 M3s, and it's arguably the best looking M3 ever created with the boxy design and its mean, aggressive lines and its big booty. In 1992, BMW created the second generation of the M3. This time it was based on the E36. The second generation. Subdued elegance. Yet again, BMW would take the E36 into the garage for some serious plastic surgery, much like the Kardashians. Under the hood, they added two more cylinders and offered two different variations of the engine. The E36 started with a 3.0 liter that created 286 horsepower and 236 foot-pounds of torque, but later upgraded to the 3.2 liter, which made a respectable 321 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. The 3.2 liter raced to 60 miles an hour in 5.4 seconds. Unfortunately, here in the US, both engines were tuned down to only 240 horsepower. From 1992 to 1995, the E36 M3 came equipped with a five-speed manual. But in 95, they received a nice little facelift and a different six-speed manual transmission. Both transmissions came with the option of an SMG automatic gearbox. But come on, the clutch pedal is one of the best parts of the manual, right? The E36 M3 didn't just come in a coupe, it also came in a sedan and a cabriolet. Convertible. Unfortunately, the stupid convertible sold just as horrible as it looked. In the year 2000, much like Y2K, BMW came out with their third body style for the M3. The BMW M3 success story continues. This time it was based on the E46. Sadly, BMW only created a coupe for this version of the M3. This beautiful car came with either a six speed manual or a six speed automatic transmission with the shifty boys. The six cylinder engine produced 343 horsepower and 269 foot pounds of torque. This made it possible for the E46 M3 to go from zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Luckily in 2006, BMW created the CSL version of the E46 M3, by far one of my favorites. It stands for Coupe Sports Lightweight. Doesn't really ring, does it? BMW really emphasized the lightweight part of the CSL and removed anything that would make the M3 lighter. They also upgraded the engine to produce 360 horsepower and 273 foot-pounds of torque. The E46 M3 CSL finally got the M3 zero to 60 time under five seconds. Officially, it was 4.9. In 
In 2007, BMW came out with the fourth generation of the M3. Based on the E90 and 92, this M3 was the car to beat on the track. It enters the market. It has been given the development code E92. This generation came out with a V8 engine that produced 420 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque. This M3 went from 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, while the sedan E90 made it in 4.7 seconds. The transmissions for these M3s were either a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. <laughs> The E92 M3 was built better than all previous models. It came with an all-new suspension, a limited slip differential, new electronics that made speed, cornering, drifting much better. In 2010, BMW made a track version of the E92 M3 known as the GTS. BMW took out weight and added power. Its upgraded V8 made 450 horsepower and 324 foot-pounds of torque. That allowed the GTS to go from 0 to 60 in only 4.4 seconds. In 2014, BMW announced that this time the M3 would only come in a sedan, while the previous coupe M3 would become the M4. This is when all those M3 fanboys got pissed. The F80 M3 was the first twin turbocharged M3. The first turbocharged M3. And they went from a V8 to an inline six. Although it was a smaller engine, the F80 M3 produced more horsepower than any of the previous models. This guy made 425 horsepower and 406 foot-pounds of torque. The seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission went from zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds, while the six-speed manual did it in 4.3. The F80 platform kept up with the M3 history and made everything about this car sporty and ready for the track. In 2017, BMW announced they were going to bring an exclusive CS model to the market. This guy boasted another 40 foot-pounds of torque and 450 horsepower. This guy was perfect for the track. And they... The curb weight on this bad boy came in just shy of 3,500 pounds. The extra power and the shaving and weight helped the CS go to zero to 60 in just under 3.9 seconds. Unfortunately, this model only came with a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It did not come with the manual trans, so we just still doing the shifty boys. Within the F80 platform, there was three other platforms as well that we won't discuss today, such as the convertible platform and also the coupe M4. Those will stay for another day. We're just gonna keep it to the M3. 2020 BMW released the G80 platform with an all new twin turbo inline fix. <laughs> In 2020 BMW released the G80 M3 with an all new twin turbo inline six. This motor was actually already put in an X3M and people are seeing massive horsepower gains from this engine. G80 comes two trim levels. The basic M3 that comes in a manual transmission with an optional of a eight speed automatic or the competition model that only comes in the automatic transmission. What are you thinking? Give me the manual transmission in the competition, please. Anger, it's real. The regular M3 produced 473 horsepower and 406 foot-pounds of torque. The competition trim of the M3 pushes to 510 horsepower and 479 foot-pounds of torque. But keep in mind, this bad boy has a lot more weight. A lot more. The upgraded specs being paired with a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission push the competition M3 from zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. The looks of the G80 M3 are something new. It has a controversial front grille that people either really love or they really hate. The rest of the car makes up for the front grille with its pure power and its ability to outperform many cars on the track. I even went down there and tried one, looked at it a couple times, walked around it, sat in the new carbon buckets. I think I like the M3 better, but I think I would, I would actually probably fork out the little extra dough for these buckets. And I just couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around this car. The M3 is one of BMW's best car lines ever, from the historic E30 M3 that broke records to the controversial front grille of the G80 M3. BMW never went wrong, or did they? It's crazy to think that BMW was never even gonna produce the M3 to the public, but boy, are we glad they did. Thank you for tuning in to Cobalt B. I am your host, Jake, and I am a BMW fanboy, but not so much of this one. Louder, with your mouth open. Just got Cobalt V. No, no, you can't be in my first one. You're in all the videos. Okay, bye. Like and subscribe.